In this video, we are going to demonstrate um, Geomagic for SolidWorks. Uh, and for this video, we're going to show what we call hybrid modeling. Now, we've done another video where we show kind of uh, traditional uh, uh, modeling within Geomagic for SolidWorks where we bring in scan data. And we cut sections and we build, you know, we build sketches and extrude and cut and do different things. This one's going to be a little different where we've got something that's very organic in shape. So you really can't do a lot of sketch driven modeling. Um, so we're going to do a command called auto surf. But then once we get that done, we will do some traditional modeling on it, more of your feature modeling or sketch modeling. Uh, so that's why we call it um, uh, hybrid modeling. So to start with, Geomagic for SolidWorks is an add-on software product to SolidWorks. But what's really nice about it is it runs right inside SolidWorks. So uh, some people know uh, Geomagic has a product called DesignX, which is a very powerful reverse engineering tool, but it's a standalone product. So you've got to basically learn a, a different system. It's you know similar to SolidWorks, but it's different. Um, and you're running it standalone. The advantage of this is it's all integrated in SolidWorks, and if you already know SolidWorks, it makes it very easy. So uh, let's get started. So you've got this tab here for it. Now we can start two ways. We can click this button and actually have our scanner hooked up and actually do 3D scanning, and the data would appear right here in SolidWorks. For this case, we've already done the scanning, so we're just going to import it in. And what this is is what's called a shoe last. And what a shoe last is, is it's used in the manufacturing process to make shoes. Uh, it kind of looks like your foot. Um, and basically all the leather and the sole and everything is basically, uh, you know, this is, it's wrapped around it and then, you know, sewn or glue, glued or whatever. Now, this particular last is handmade. Um, and we're going to um, make some changes to it um, and basically create a new one. Um, uh, we want to get it all digital and then, like I said, make changes to it. So you can see this is a very organic shape. And, you know, if you were to try to, you know, design this uh, in SolidWorks, it's very difficult because it's, you know, there's really nothing to measure. It is just, you know, all this organic shape. So even with the uh, Geomagic module here, uh, you know, cutting sections through it and trying to loft or extrude uh, would be extremely difficult. Now, uh, poly, uh, uh, scan data is really just uh, what we call uh, polygon data. So I'm going to turn the edges on and zoom in. And you can see it's just triangles, okay? And, uh, you know, depending on the scanner, you know, you, 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 or what density you're running at, you'll, you'll see, uh, you know, more or less. Um, but it's a very dumb model. There's no intelligence to this. And when, normally when you load this into SolidWorks, you can't do anything with it. You can't cut sections through it. You can't measure it. You really can't do anything with it. Um, with the Geomagic plugin, it allows us to do a lot with it, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a command called Auto Surface. Now, uh, before we do that, there are a bunch of mesh editing tools. This, this mesh came in. It's watertight, meaning there's no holes in it, and it's ready to go. But we could smooth it. We could repair it. We could fill holes, and we can do some, some tools. But in this case, we don't need them. So we're going to go straight to this Auto Surfacing command. Um, and I'm going to take the defaults, but just uh, without going into too much detail, um, you can pick, you know, how you want it to uh, fit the surfaces. Um, you can define a, a certain amount of uh, patches you want. Um, and then surface detail is basically how accurate you want it to try to fit to the mesh. So let's get it started. So what this is going to do is it's going to build a surface model. Um, and it's going to basically build, build a surface patch model or, or a quilted patch, as some people like to call it. Um, but basically, it, what it did, it just finished. Let's turn off the scan data. So let's just hide that. And let's come in here and turn on our edges. So this is a watertight, solid body um, that you see here. If it wasn't um, enclosed, it would be just a surface skin model. But since it's totally enclosed... Um, it is a solid body. Now, it's not very editable unless we went back to the scan data and made changes to the scan data and then re resurfaced it. But it is a solid body now. So this, the scan data was in a STL format or OBJ. Now, with this surface patch model, I can export this as an IGES, a STEP, a Parasolid, 
which is typically what you need for manufacturing. So if I was done, I could now just simply export this and then have this thing CNC machine, or I could have an injection mold made if these were going to be made out of like plastic or something. Now, I want to go on and do some additional modeling, but again, this is what an auto surface model looks like. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is bring our scan data back, and one of the things we can do um, in this GeoMagic product is what's called an accuracy analyzer. What I want to do is I want to compare my scan data to that solid body we just built and see how accurate it is. Okay, And it's going to give us this color-coded map. And if you look over here to the right, you can see the green is uh, plus or minus 11 thousandths. And then if you were undersized, you'd see blue and oversized red. Now, if you look at this, most of it is green, but you can actually see here we're seeing a little bit of blue, and that's because any real sharp corners, a surface model can't really create a sharp corner. Um, so we're getting a little bit of undersizing, and we could go back and adjust that tolerance on uh, that surface model if we want, but for, for our purposes, we look at this and we'll say, you know what? That's good enough, but we can use that to, uh, you know, to check it to see if it's if it's what we want. And again, if I turn off the scan data, you can see it tries to intelligently break up the surfaces at the those sharp corners, but it's never going to be perfect. If if uh, if you look at this, surfaces can't make a sharp corner; you have to break them. Um, but overall, it does a pretty good job. So let's go ahead now, bring the scan data back, and let's hide that solid body. Because what I want to do next, um, and some of these commands we could do right on that solid body, but I actually want to show them on the scan data. So one of the beauties of this GeoMagic for SolidWorks is I can cut sections and do a lot of stuff right from the scan data. So what I want to do is I want to create a plane right here at this, this top, because that's pretty flat, so that'll allow me to do that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the reference plane command, I'm going to tr change uh, my uh, selection mode. to uh, It's already set to lasso. And basically what I want to do is I want to just window in, basically just get uh, some of this scan data. And you can see what it's done. It's highlighted in red what I've picked. And I can add or subtract to my se selection if I want to add more uh, or, or subtract. Let's add a little more back in. Okay, so normal stuff. But you can see what it's doing. It's going to average and fit a plane through that scan data okay so you can see what it's done it's basically fit a plane through there and then i can use this plane to do different things um, cut sections and do uh, uh, different things i can offset it so you know just like you can nor uh, normally in in uh, in solid works i can offset down because actually what i want to do is i want to cut down into the part here so we'll just do an offset plane in this case and let's turn off that top plane. So what I want to do now is I want to run a command uh, called cross section, and I'm going to pick this plane. And you can see what it's doing. It's actually cutting a plane through the scan data and and creating a sketch. So let's go ahead and take the default. And if we hide that plane, okay, you can see. Let's hide the mesh. You can see this a little bit better. Okay, so it's built. A, a, a what we call a mesh and you see here it shows up in the tree as a mesh sketch so it's like a regular sketch in 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 SolidWorks but it's it's construction geometry so it cuts it and just creates a polyline and it turns it into you know construction geometry um, as you see here so uh, if I edit this sketch I can actually uh, come in here and what I'm going to do normally I would you know maybe build some other geometry for it in this case, I'm basically just going to turn off the uh, the construction designation, and that just turns it back into a polyline, and then I'm going to exit out. And let's bring uh, back our uh, our actual CAD data, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that, that section, uh, and I'm going to go to a feature, because, again, it's just like a normal section, and I am going to uh, basically extrude. Uh, let's go in the other direction and let's go, let's try a half inch because for my manufacturing process, um, I need, uh, uh, and, and I want to redesign this a little bit. I need this to be a little bit taller. 
um, uh, let's go 0.75. You can, you know, basically do whatever you want. Um, and we want to just merge the results. So basically, we're going to build more of a sketch-driven uh, body, but we're going to tie it back into this um, this um, uh, surfaced, uh, you know, this auto surface model. So you can see what we get. Um, so this is what we're talking about, kind of a hybrid model. So you can see we've added that extension to it, and it's all one body now. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I need a couple holes in the top here. So again, we go back to our sketch, and uh, what we'll do is let's get to a, a, a top view. So we're looking at the top of it. Okay, and I want to put a couple holes in here. Okay, and at this point, again, I'm just sketching. So I can, let's make that a quarter inch, and let's put another hole here. Oops. And we'll also make that one a quarter inch. Okay, and you know, I can move their location maybe. Again, at this point, it's just your standard you know, SolidWorks commands, let's make them 1.5 inches. Um, you know, I can't really, uh, the, you know, I can kind of estimate where I want them from the edges and all that, but because it's so organic shape, but hey, that's good, it's good enough for, for what I need. So now I've built those, uh, those sketches and now go back to our features. And this time I'm going to do an extruded cut and I want to do both. And uh, I'm going to go 0.25 inches. And there you go. So you can see I've cut those holes. So again, now we're doing more just your traditional, you know, solid work sketching at this point. Okay. So I need those mount holes on the top. And then the last thing I need, let's go, I'm going to turn on the front plane. And I need a slot up here through the base. So again, I'm going to do a sketch. And let's go uh, look at that normal. And I need a one inch by half inch slot, and it just has to be approximate over here. So we'll make that one inch. And then this way, 0.5. Okay. And you can see that's just kind of sitting out there right now. Go back to our features, extruded cut. And we just pull it through. We don't care how far. Okay, so you can see what that's done. Let's turn off that plane. And then the last thing I need to do, I need to fill at that edge. So we come in here and we just pick those edges. And you can see it, you know, you just got to grab one of them on that surface. Um, point one is fine. Okay, so you can see we've done that side. Let's go ahead and do this side. So you can see the beauty of this. We're working on a very organic model, but yet at the same time, you know, we're able to do more prismatic things. Okay, so there we go. That's all, all I need for this. So just to kind of wrap up, what we did was we brought in scan data, very organic in shape, no way to really feature drive it. Um, again, you could try to cut a bunch of sections and try to loft or, you know, do, but it'd be very difficult. And, and we're not really going to change this organic shape. Uh, if we did, you know, there are there are ways to do that with certain tools for mesh editing and and then bring it in here. But um, uh, we brought it in here. We auto surfaced it so that we get a watertight model. And then we uh, cut some sections. We extruded up more traditional sketch modeling, put a couple holes in it and then um, also built the slot and radius it. So now that we're done, we can go and export this as a uh, IGES file, a STEP file, a, a, a Parasolid, you know, any of the traditional CAD formats that you would share with somebody for manufacturing. So whether this is going to get CNC machined or um, uh, 3D printed or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, injection molded, uh, we can put it out in a, co uh, a, a CAD format that's usable. Okay. So again, it's, it's, a little bit of uh, uh, this organic modeling and then, you know, some traditional modeling. And that's why we call it uh, uh, hybrid modeling. So just a quick overview of what hybrid modeling using the add-on product called Geomagic for SolidWorks.